So, um, one of the things we've, we, our speakers have touched on today is the accredited certification program, the, the aspect of certain organizations choosing to be um, accredited um, under these programs. And to talk about that um, in, in a bit more detail, I'm delighted to introduce uh, Peter Bayer from DXC. He is a DXC technologist for DXC Technology. He works closely with architecture capabilities to align the global strategy in exploiting the standards of mandating methods, tooling, and skills. He coordinates, develops strategies, and solves problems to further enhance the internal architecture profession in response to the developments in the IT industry. Dr. Bayer was the chief technologist in the analytics and data management practice from Enterprise Services, where he was instrumental in developing the new practice in the Netherlands through capability development and business development. And uh, today, Peter is going to give an overview of the accredited certification program, how it benefits employees, employers, and third parties. So a warm welcome from the Open Group, please, to Dr. Peter Bayer. Welcome, Peter. Nice to see you. Thank well, you very much, you. Steve. There you are. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay, good, great. So, uh, welcome everyone and uh, thank you for joining. So, um, I guess we all recognize from the previous presentation from Anders that the shift to digital uh, certainly isn't uh, an easy one if you uh, talk in perspective of professions, right? Uh, things look like they're going easier, but uh, getting things harnessed in a profession is, is, is not an easy job. And uh, Scott Knapp has shown us that organizing a profession uh, takes quite an effort to do it very well in, in an organization. So um, part of the, uh, the professions program, as we, as we look at today here in this, uh, this session, is the uh, accredited certified program, the ACP for short, and um, that's what I'm going to talk about today. So th this presentation is not about what the criteria are for, for becoming uh, an ACP. No, it's talking about what is it and, and how can it help you as an organization or an employee to, uh, to benefit from that. Right, so uh, the next slide. So if you look at organizations, um, Typically, what I see in my organization and others is that the line of business has definitely, uh, they need to, to define, they need to maintain competencies, build competencies in order to, uh, to service their, their clients, uh, whether that is individual companies, whether there's governments, everyone has to operate a line of business and you need professional people for that, right? Uh, you need to manage supply and demand with skilled professionals. And on top of that, you also have to facilitate the career progression of your employees to, uh, to keep them happy and to give them a perspective as an employer to, uh, to work for you. Yeah. So uh, one of the key things that employers need to do is maintain a, a solid hiring process for contractors, for recruiting. Do they fit in your skills program, et cetera? Um, doing that is not easy. Yeah. Um, if you have not defined professions very well, uh, hiring uh, becomes an increased project risk if it doesn't, uh, if it isn't defined properly. Yeah. What kind of people are you looking for to do a certain job? So uh, that is one of the pains that we see organization in. in getting someone from the market or internally even uh, for a certain project or certain job. So it's difficult also to keep up with the changes in the world, what's going on. Uh, Andras just showed us that the whole digital shift has uh, confronted us actually with a new um, discipline within the architect profession. So we, we, we built a new uh, set of skills uh, around that. And also within organizations, uh, consistency across job families, across uh, uh, professionals within the organization is, is quite something you can benefit from. Uh, there's quite, there, I, I often see quite a lot of conversations 
uh, yeah, I need an architect, but what type of architect are we looking for? I need an IT specialist. Yeah, what, what type of specialist are we looking for? So what you see here is generally the pains that HR organizations and uh, also the business is confronted with in trying to find uh, what generally in, in the uh, in defining the uh, the jobs, so let's see. Right. So, what we have here then is uh, an accredited certification program, and all these perspectives from my first slide were uh, considerations to build a program uh, that standardizes the process and the criteria for a certification, and that is the uh, the, the program we've seen, but. Uh, the accredited certification program establishes for your organization a foundation for the required skills and experience necessary to achieve certification. Uh, the whole ACP for accreditation, accredited certification program, that has been designed to be flexible, to be extensible. Uh, Scott Nup uh, gave us a, a sneak preview of that. And we will learn uh, also in other presentations more from that. But this framework may be adopted by any industry, by any country, by organization. You could do country specific stuff, organization specific stuff. So the whole framework is built to be flexible and extensible. And it includes, and this is where this program is about accreditation for third parties to establish and operate a professional certification program that is affiliated to the open group certification, such as open certified architect, open certified data specialist, and so on. So we, um, within the team, we had some uh, considerations of somehow my slides are in the wrong order. No. Okay, so, so these are all, um, considerations in building also a set of requirements and a policy that is kind of uh, natural fitting the certification program. As you will learn later uh, with the individual presentations about data scientists, about architecture and so on, uh, there is a certification policy. What policies do apply in certification land for that specific uh, profession? and what conformance requirements are there. Now, analog to that, we also built an accreditation policy and an accreditation requirement. So what does it need in order to become accredited in running a program for certification within your organization? So there's a natural fit there. Yeah, and developing these conformance requirements for the individual professions, we frequently had discussions, okay, if we come up with a requirement for certification for conformance about, for example, the data scientist, how does that affect an organization that runs a certification program? So there's a tight connection actually to the two, and that's why I say it's a natural fit, but it's also an integral part of the whole program. Right, so currently, and that has been uh, shown before, we have four professions in the program. Uh, there's the architect, there's the data scientist, technical specialist, and just the technology provider, which is kind of the new kid on the block. Yeah. Um, uh, as a ACP, you can adopt all four of them or any combination thereof. So what characterizes an accredited certification program? So in our teams, we talk about it's indirect certification. So what does that mean? And basically the whole process of peer evaluation, uh, which is normally organized by the certification authority of the open group, peer review board, that is actually uh, delegated to the certification uh, of, of, of the ACP program. So the ACP actually organizes all that stuff, the peer review boards, uh, are people uh, compliant with the conformance, conformance criteria, 
as well. So they ensure that the candidates meet the conformance requirements. Yeah. And they ensure that the whole program as defined by the open group is followed within the organization. Um, they ensure, an ACP ensures that the method of doing the evaluation, the procedures, that they are functionally equivalent to those defined by the certification policy and the professions configuration document. And as Scott has shown, you actually can augment that, um, that on top of your own um, requirements for your professions defined within your organization. Like I say here, ACPs may add their own requirements to those of the open uh, group standard yeah, for an in-house method. Um, so what that basically looks like is that you have defined the profession and that is based on the open group standard. And on top of that, you can apply your own additional standards or requirements that people must adhere to in order to become certified. So there's three choices for the road to certification. Uh, we have been developing in the regular program where we have direct certification through the, uh, the open group, through the certification authority. We now have, and Andras has shown that a modular approach, a stepwise approach towards certification. ACPs have actually three choices. They can follow the monolithic approach where we have a single certification package and that can be extended with the organization's own criteria. Um, the ACP can follow the, uh, the steps defined by the open group, the, which we call the, uh, the modular approach with all the, uh, um, the, the badges. Yeah. And you can define your own steps as long as this uh, follows functionally uh, that it is equivalent to what the uh, the open group has defined. So anyone certified through an ACP must meet or exceed, of course, the requirements for certification direct with the open group. So that characterizes the program and that organizations need to look after when they start such a program. So what parties are involved then? So becoming an ACP, the open group has the certification authority. And they do all the administration and the certification authority appoints an assessor to look at your process and the way you have organized your steps to uh, certify people, to evaluate people, assess people uh, where they are with their uh, the level of conformance in their, uh, with their portfolio of experience. So normally organizations apply a certification program manager. Uh, typically a person who is responsible for, responsible for the operation, for the quality, uh, for the integrity of the program. And that is basically that person who organizes it within uh, the organization and the single point of contact for the certification authority. All right, so um, the road towards certification with ACPs, like I mentioned before, uh, you can augment criteria on uh, the um, certification or the uh, yeah, certification conformance requirements. Um, so basically, as an ACP, you can personalize the road towards certification. You can add your own requirements to that. You can modularize it, create a whole new structure, and uh, you can actually choose whether you use the uh, the certification authority to issue issue milestone badges, but you could also do it your own. Yeah. The key question for ACPs to follow is whether have the professions conformance requirements been met, and is the evaluation process functionally properly done? Doesn't need to be identical. It doesn't need to follow all the steps that have been defined by the uh, direct certification but there must be a functional level that we can say okay there has been a evaluation taking place by the candidate uh, 
for the candidate by uh, peer reviews that is functionally uh, properly and equivalent. So let's have a look at the other side of the coin. What's in it for the professional? So for the professional, uh, it assures you're on par with your peers within your organization, outside your employer's organization. So for a professional, this actually increases your value. Yeah, it increase, uh, there's increased value to yourself, there's increased value to your peers and to your employer. Because we have a good defined profession uh, based on industry standards here within the open group. Uh, that's a long history. So uh, that really increases your value uh, to the outside world and well, to yourself and employer. It articulates very well your portfolio of experience. Uh, those who have gone through the process of becoming certified will recognize that there's lots of questions that are experience based. Uh, like previous presenters already said, the focus is on experience, not on knowledge. Also, on knowledge, but experience is the, uh, the center of gravity. Um, so, as a professional, uh, we are trying to understand what you did as a professional to solve a business problem with a technical solution. And it gives you a lot of clarity on your career progression. Now, maybe this is a challenging statement, but uh, would for you as a professional, would an ACP be a selection criteria for your next employer? Something to think about, because if I look at it from the outside world, uh, if I look at an employer that runs it, uh, that has been accredited as a ACP, as an accredited certification program, to me, that would mean this employer has things very well in order. They have a structure, they think about their profession, they think about how they, uh, they organize things. So something to think about. So typically what I see from enterprises that run uh, an accredited program, uh, they apply a profession framework, it sets the baseline, uh, it sets the standard for people, what they are expected to do, what they need to do, uh, they typically augment in-house standards on top of the baseline, the baseline as defined by the open group. There's a benefit of economy of skills in both ways. Larger organization actually can scale up the profession program. There's a cost benefit. And uh, if you look at, uh, if you join the program versus individual certification, while smaller organization can actually take advantage of the plug and play mechanism. You could just plug and play the whole framework in your organization because that framework has already uh, been built. And there's very few resources needed in order to get it going. So this is typically what we see with uh, organizations that run the program. Second part of that, uh, yes, you do need to set up uh, your own system. Uh, but what we have really seen is that structuring that part in your organization, it also leads to communities because you have birds of a feather, people that have a, a, a common thing to talk about. So uh, you actually automatically start creating communities. Um, also very nice is that we can introduce or the industry can introduce new professions to contribute. Uh, we've recently seen uh, the trusted uh, technology uh, part, which is a new profession, uh, really emerges in the industry and uh, that is contributed to, to the program. Uh, we currently talk about, think about a uh, profession in a box so that we create actually a, a box. Okay. How do we need to add a new profession to the uh, certification program as a whole? Organizations typically are more mindful about their intellectual property. What do we share versus what do we not share? That's also part in the, uh, if you participate in, in the work groups, uh, 
great. Um, and that's how this whole program started. A couple of organizations in the industry joined together. Hey, this is common. Uh, we all face the same problem and we share things without sharing too much because you're mindful of that. And one of the great um, benefits is that uh, they, uh, those um, enterprises, they externalize what they do uh, regarding the profession. I've seen, and probably what, what Scott uh, Knopp has shown us, it's, it's a great example how an organization can externalize what they do regarding a profession. And isn't that a great advertisement? Hey, this is what we do as an organization to build your career uh, towards your potential clients and, and employees. This, this is what we do. Uh, also think about RFPs, request for proposals. Uh, how many people are asked? How many organizations are asked? Um, what do you have organized in terms of the knowledge and experience that is going to help me with my project? Uh, so this is really a, a, a good sales item for organization. This is the way we have organized our profession, professions um, and how we, um, we evaluate them, that they are current and up to date. So uh, in summary, um, an ACP, the short for accredited certification program. Uh, we see it as an integral part of the professions program. That's on the spotlight uh, today. Uh, there is benefit for both the employer and the professional, like I've shown you. Uh, think about it, is, the, uh, is an ACP uh, my next employer? Uh, there's a framework for third parties uh, about the profession, about certification, about evaluation, and the whole program is flexible and extensible. Uh, think about profession in the box. Think about how we can add a new profession to the program. And I'm sure there's many uh, professions looming there with the whole digital shift. Uh, I think we only see um, the very beginning of it. Okay, Steve, back to you. This is um, what I had to share today. Thank you, Peter. And I, I, it's great to leave on that on that note is this is the start, but there there are almost certainly many more. So thank you for your overview from the ACP perspective, and we'll uh, have you back for the panel session just a, a little later. Um, we'll have some questions uh, coming in there. As a reminder, please put your questions in the Q&A um, channel rather than the chat. Um, but great job, Peter. Warm uh, round of applause, please, for Dr. Peter Byer. Thank you. So, folks, um, just before we go to the break, I just made a, uh, a quick note of um, some of the countries. I, I said, well, why not go in the chat and say where, you, where you're joining us from? And many of you did, and I appreciate it. So just, just based on, on what I see in the chat, we've got people in the UK, Australia, India, United States, Canada, Singapore, Algeria, South Africa, the Czech Republic, Dubai, and Peru. So if your country isn't in there, then please go in the chat. And even if it is, go in the chat and tell us where you're joining from and anything else you want to share with your fellow colleagues. We'll take a break and be back in 10 minutes. Thank you for your attention. And we'll, we'll start promptly again in 10 minutes time. Thank you. <laughs> 